Hello everyone and welcome back. We're here with game two of the e-commerce wars after JDG took a slightly confusing victory over Sooning Gaming, but I have to admit in the end their strategy ended up being pretty solid with the Baron takes. They're all about the purple, much like my suit. Here with Clement Chu once again. Let's break down that last game a little bit. <laughs> I got to say, I wouldn't use the word confusing. I would use the word entertaining because JD Gaming are one of the funnest teams to watch when it comes down to it. And one thing they factor into their play that no other team does is that they believe they are strictly better players. <laughs> and that's why a lot of times they do go for the 50-50s. If you've seen JD Gaming's previous set in the one game that they did win, that's exactly how they did it. They did Baron after Baron bait six times in a row, and they finally got it. Was it dicey? Could have any of them gone wrong? Yes. But did they prevail? Also yes. Now, if you look at the start of the game, there are actually, there's only one ultimate left on JD Gaming. So if Bubu actually lands any of his barrels right here, it's a super dicey situation. But good move on Zoom. He goes in, and he does create that zoning potential where his team can finish off the Baron, they come back, and then they win the fight. But if you look at the margins of that one, even though they were up 6k, it was still incredibly dangerous. It was just a couple ultimates away, a, a couple millipixels away from going the other way, and you could see that Weiwei was still in the pit anyways. So, do I endorse this type of a play? Is something that I think a lot of uh, a lot of analysts like myself will be looking at JD Gaming and going like. <laughs> You know what is in there, though? Clement. What? We have our MVP for game number one. And All right. <laughs> it's going to be flawless. And hopefully, hopefully, I'm happy with it. Yeah. 75% I... KP, 4, 1, and 8 on the Sejuani. I think he played up to a level we have not seen him play so far this split. I will say, I don't think he actually got the MVP because of the play around the Baron Pits. The most important part for me was punishing Biu Biu to the maximum potential. They got a top lane dive onto Biu Biu. They killed Maple in the exact same spot. And they also prevented the game plan from catching up once the swap was completed. So being at the right time, in the right places, was the reason I felt like Flawless got that game. He is still a veteran of the game, and you could see that experience lead really triumphed over the experience coming out from the top side of Sunni, which I felt was all out of sorts after the entire swap. Here's the biggest question that Sunni have to answer. You've beaten teams at the bottom of the table, to be honest. You've beaten Vici, you've beaten WE, but can you actually beat a team that puts a lot of resources into their top lane, is willing to split push with their top lane? Do you have an answer to that type of team comp? Feels like right now they really don't. And that's that's problematic because that game, before 20 minutes, killed Biu Biu. Honestly, post 20 minutes, it was still kill Biu Biu. But you have the additional objective of the Baron, and when you have such a hard focus on getting the top laner behind, suddenly that forces them to respond. That forces them to figure out how they want to deal with this. And you suddenly put them under a lot of pressure, and Sooning seemed to crack under that pressure. And JDG's 50-50 strategy ended up working. Yeah. I, I think the key thing for Sooning in the future games, in this one at least, is that they need to think of something that can actually get give them a sizable kill lead in terms of the bot lane. If you look at all of the Sooning bot lanes, they've been playing very passive bot lanes. Bot lanes are not necessary kill lanes, aside from the last one. So if they can't make anything happen on the top side, they at least need something guaranteed in the bottom. I think that's what cuts it. You know, if Zoom's going to play towards the top side, if JD Gaming are going to get Renekton in the head, you need to be able to get something back elite at the very least on the bottom so i, I want to see if suning can ne make the ne next step from playing a hyper carry focus smlz bot lane until something that can play early aggression as well and get stable leads while the enemy is pummeling on bubu poor bubu i f i still feel for him man but if we're looking at jdg as well because they they played well but definitely not up to the standard we have set for them not up to the standards they set for themselves last spring split because that was in a word, a little bit messy. If they 50-50 Baron to Worlds, I gotta say I'm gonna be their biggest fan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it'll, if nothing else, it will be one hell of an impressive way to make a Worlds run. Yes, it will be. It, it, it may it be a very short be. Worlds run, <laughs> but it would be an impressive way to get there. So how do, they, how do they make up for this fact that they seem to have only had that strategy in mind getting into the later stages of the game? That's a that's a good one. So, the thing that's that I've for. been missing for JD Gaming is just proper snowballing on top side. Zoom is worth investing in, a hundred percent. 
recent times we haven't seen a game that started out with Zoom getting the kills. It's always been Zoom pushing up or standing behind his uh, minion getting zoned out. It's never been, okay, Flawless, I'm going to get a good gank on Zoom for the top side. Right now we get that kill. We continue to throw resources at him. We're going to win on this side. We haven't really seen any game whatsoever. We haven't even seen the inkling of a capability to do so. So I think that's the key ingredient. I think JD Gaming are missing in a lot of these. For their bottom side, to, to be honest, their regular split looked like that. <laughs> their bottom side was kind of the BB of the BB of the map for them. So I, I think that's okay. But that I at least need to get that same synergy they had with Flawless, Yagao, and Zoom that they did in the previous splits. Their top side was always their strong side. Their ability to move these pieces out of the lane to impact the rest of the map was always their strong side, uh, always their strong point. But in, in this series, even in game one, I, I don't even think that they were proactive in terms of uh, getting the macro lead. I, I felt like it was more like Suni just slipping up <laughs> rather than them proactively taking over that lead. So top side snowball, snowball, sorry, it's not, not snowball, snowball <laughs> is still the most important thing for JD game. And it, it does. It, it, it is sort of weird to see a JD gaming that doesn't focus on Zoom. Because is. that that is literally how they made their playoffs run. They just relied on Zoom so heavily. Against RNG, that was how they won. They were just like, okay, Zoom, here's Kale. Do your thing. And he did. He carried them through that playoffs run into the finals. The fact that JD gaming are not utilizing this massive carry top lane that they have, the fact that they're not utilizing their capacity to work with him is... I would say more than frustrating, it's perplexing. Yeah, it definitely is. If you look at JD Gaming's gold graphs, they've basically flatlined the entire early game. They've been consistently behind, which is not what the JD Gaming was like when it came to the playoff run. They were actually consistently ahead in this time. They had a lot of leads onto Zoom. They always wanted to keep in ahead. So that's the uh, that's the biggest change here. And I think we've seen some signs of life from JD Gaming. At least they found a way to get themselves in the fight and just use their superior mechanics to brute force their ways to wins over and over again, but that's nowhere close to the true heights of our finalists that LPL produced in, in spring. And I think as well, one of the things that we can't minimize is that Luma is back because the previous series had this same feeling to them, but when you have Teen instead of Luma, there's a little bit more urgency in the bot lane having problems because it's like, okay, do we trust do we trust Teen to shot call as well? Do we trust him to lead the team later as well? Do we tr trust him to team fight as well? And honestly, I think the answer to all of those is no, because Lumao is so impressive. He is one of the best supports in the LPL. I honestly don't know why there's something in Teen uh, over and over again. To, to be fair, in principle, I'm always for having subs. I think it motivates your, uh, your, your star players to do better and reach further. But JD Gaming are in a pit that they need to come out of really, really fast. So a bit questionable as why they're doing these rotations. Thankfully, we're not going to have any sub substitutes for this game. It's still going to be the uh, the exact same rosters going head to head. And all I just want to see is uh, if they can get a good counter pick and have a good snowball for Zoom in that top side. In terms of draft then, because that's a great segue from it, as the players get onto the stage, what do we want to see here from JDG? Because Strong top side seems to be an obvious option, but was there anything else in their draft you would want to see changed, or is it mostly just execution? Well, I think the execution is what really matters right there. They didn't hold on to the Renekton versus Gameplank lane as much as they I uh, would have liked to. That's a lane where you have priority and you can help the jungler from there on, but not necessarily make kills. They basically abandoned that lane. Um, so I, 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 don't think uh, I don't think the draft has that much to do with it. They hit all their key markers. They took away the main two win conditions that Suning had. Just take away the Sona, uh, ban away the Sona, and then take away the Silas. So that's basically all the wins that <laughs> Suning has shown so far. <laughs> so I think that's a good idea. They're forcing Suning to show something new, and I'm interested in what Suning have. They've been running compositions where Sivir is important, where Chase Down is important. They know that they're more of a 5v5 team than a split pushing team. So I think they're. They have that identity on lockdown, but they need to expand upon that framework. What do you put BB on if you are fluid win? Because that gangplank, gangplank, I feel is not a champion that loses gracefully. Uh, and Bubio's I, last performance when we saw him in the spring split, he played Jarvan and he played it fine. He just didn't lose aggressively in the lane, and then in team fighting, he was able to bring it back. 
So do we want to see something like that, or are there other options that are just so much better? To be honest, I feel like Gameplank is almost as close as you can get to being a completely safe pick. Kennen might be another option, but it was also banned away by uh, by uh, JD Gaming in that draft. You're looking at something ranged, something has wave clear, and if you take those in two into account, you're thinking Ryzen Kennen. <laughs> Maybe the Nico. That's pretty much it. If you're going to leave that lane alone, then range and wave clear are probably the most important parts, so you, you don't have to face tower dives most of the time. I think that's the best answer. If you want a little bit more information on BB, he was taken up from the uh, the sister team of Suning, and he previously was actually a Chogath main, which is very far out there in the meta. A very interesting champion pool so far. But I, I don't necessarily think he's as bad as he looks, but he's just not been given any attention. The team is uh, astoundingly a 2017 LPL team where everything goes to the bottom lane. As top lane, do you have your teleport working? Yes. You're a good top laner, so that's kind of the situation that BB finds himself in. The Jarvan's an interesting one. We see a lot of Jarvan in LEC, and we have seen him for the for the previous splits, but uh, in the LPL, nobody really plays him. Um, <laughs> consider a bit of a weaker champion in terms of uh, in terms of the top lane dueling, and people haven't taken an inkling to that whatsoever. <laughs> so I don't think we're going to see it here either. It's uh, well, that brings me to the following question: Is with BB playing poorly without the jungle support, with him not having the capacity to seemingly play a lane as safely as he needs to, do, do we expect Fluidwin to tell everyone, okay, just give him some attention. Give him a little bit of something to make sure he doesn't collapse under the pressure from JDG. Look, he got an early gank. That's that's pretty good. <laughs> the dives and stuff like that, I think Weiwei and Bibu both messed it up a little bit. Uh, I'm not assigning the blame completely on the top laner. I feel like that's that's just like a team understanding thing when you have new players on the team. So what I would say is if Sunni are going to continue with this style, one thing they need to do is that they need to step away from purely hyperscaling bot lanes and have to play something that can get aggressive leads earlier on. If you're going to ditch the top lane, then at least give me something in the bot side early. So I, I, I think that's the step that they will have to take. I don't think they're going to shore up Biu Biu in the near future. All right, so unfortunately for him, he's just stuck on a little bit of an island. Yes. That is being carpet bombed by If Zoom. you think about what Flash Wolves was, that was exactly how they played as well. <laughs> They're not going to be having much luck with that, but now they have drafted the opportunity for him to play either Ooh. Silas or the Jace. So Flex picks Galore coming out in the draft early, except for that Olaf. Suspect that to go towards the jungle. Well, definitely will still go towards there, and the Nico being taken away like we expected. Now, Jace recently has received quite a sizable uh, nerf into his Shock Blast. Now, if you use your entire Shock Blast plus Gate combo and you have 200 bonus AD, you lose out on 91 damage. It was actually a massive nerf in terms of his out-of-lane performance. So, if Suning wants this Jace to do something, then it has to be early game. Later game, Jace falls off quite hard. You're not going to see the same Jaces that uh, Yagal was actually able to do. Now look at JDG's draft because what is happening to this team? We have the second Azir we have seen so far in the summer split, 0% win rate, that's fine. And a Scion coming in for Zoom. And this is called going towards the late game. They're calling out Suning's bluff. If there's one area where I feel like Suning haven't convinced me on is playing an early aggressive game from start to finish. I don't think their team compositions were necessarily set up to do that. They, their compositions are, they're, they're kind of scaling into the mid to late game. So JD Gaming are calling them out on that. They're saying, hey, if you don't take me down early, I will take you down late. Well, looks like Suning are orienting themselves a little bit towards that earlier side, but the Nautilus very aggressive early support, taking away the Tom Kench as well, removing the safety stop, anything that can stop the Nautilus. Now, Ezreal being taken away there by JD Gaming as well. Yep, next ban should be, I would say, the Kai'Sa. I think JD Gaming, the way they're reading this, is Suni need to find something that scales alongside. Kai'Sa is one of those picks that SM Lozzi has still been drafting a lot. See what Suni's second ban is. They've already taken away the support from Lumal, but I don't feel like the Tom Kench was their biggest problem that last game. The Zaya going to be taken away as well, so AD carry pool being clamped down by both teams at this point. It's really smart right there. JD Gaming can go for Zaya Rakan while Suni can't do the same. So taking that away also takes away one of Lumal's best champions, the Rakan. Gotta see what this last ban is. I think it's going to be Kai'Sa. Still feeling the Kai'Sa? Instead it's going to be the Sivir, so... 
SMLZ still does have that option to take up the Kai'Sa now that it hasn't been banned away from him. Okay, that's that's interesting. I I actually don't mind Sivir versus Azir later into the game. I feel like she has such a short range at 500 that Azir can easily outplay it if you ever get into the team fight. Kai'Sa though. Kaisa Different does story. have short range as well, but to be fair, she is able to have a little bit more more, more mobility and she can fly over your soldiers. Yeah, that's quite a bit more mobility. Than yes, it's a lot more. So uh, I'm actually surprised here, but Suni not going to take Kaisa either. Kaisa versus, uh, and Nautilus is one of those go-to champion selects that Seth? we see as a duo. It's interesting because instead they decided to pick up the Gragas, and I'm not sure that's really higher priority in my books because now you give away the Kaisa to Imp. All right, very interesting. So JD Gaming are almost giving up on the laning phase completely. They're saying, you know what? We're gonna go full scaling. Kaisa has not had the greatest time in the LPL so far. A lot of times she, she just doesn't have that time to scale. She's not gonna have wave control most of the time. If she can't find that early kill with the Nautilus, then she just has this mid game where it's so brutal for her to survive against these Essence Reaver 80 carries. Well, instead, I've seen this story before, Clement, and it's usually not one that goes well. If you pick all scaling lanes, I've seen JDG do this before when they were running Kanavi. They have an Olaf. They just lost, <laughs> Clement. Uh, they just lost. Happen. They had a Lee Sin last time. That's a pretty early game jungler, too, and it just did not oh work out. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The Kog'Maw. <laughs> all right. This is the SMLZ special, the champion that he made his name on. When he was on OMG, they didn't take many losses on that Kogma at all. Like, Kogma was his bread and butter champion. But we haven't seen this in a long time. This is the first time that anyone is going to pick up the Kog. From Kogma to Pogma here in the LPL. But now my question is, you're going into a Lux. Isn't that pretty dangerous at this point? Uh, I would say the Olaf is pretty dangerous as well. <laughs> <laughs> but what is danger to SMLZ? Now, we have his answer. You know what? I'm going to outscale you all. I will. You think you can scale? I will scale harder. You uh, won't call me the Lizard AD Carry because of how scaling I am. It's a very different take on what we thought the trap was going to end up being. So what are we left with then? Because suddenly this, this composition was shaping up from Sooning to be sort of a more early mid oriented composition. You want to get through JDG before they get to scale up. And now that you have the Kogma finishing it off, what, is this, what does this mean for them? This means that this is SMLZ's team. <laughs> you play around me. <laughs> well, they have great poke, but if you're talking about the 5v5 composition, I still don't think they win out. If you look at the enemy team, they have a much more traditional front-to-back carry-oriented style. The Scion and Olaf, it's a great front line. They have a great mid lane mage, uh, mid line mage in the Azir as well. And the 5v5 from Suning is far weaker. You're looking at Jace and... Uh, who else is it? Jason Silas, and those are not the necessarily recognized as the strongest 5v5 champions. So I, I'm not sure. I'm not feeling this suiting composition. I, I'm the way I'm rating this is this is a let's all put our trust in SMLZ. He is our lord and savior, and he will take us through any troubles. Well, the last time they did it in the spring split, they found success when he picked Jin. Now that he's on Kogma, they're going to have to try and repeat it again. This is a lot resting in the hands of SMLZ in Game 2 of the E-Commerce Wars. spotted out here by Sooning. As will the remaining members coming in from JD Gaming. Full five-man stack. Unfortunately, they're not going to get the vertical jungling they've been looking for. Haven't been able to see a lot of successful five-man invades recently, so... JDG going to still be trying for it. They're still positioning around this, and that is really aggressive from them. I, they have a good level one uh, with the Lux. Olaf and Kaisa, but I don't think this is worth it, Flawless. This is There's how four you people. Position. This is scary, Clement. It, it is very scary. If you think about Nautilus plus Kogma, they still pack quite a bit of a punch. 
So I, I don't, I'm not sure if Flawless is still going to risk it here. They're leaving it to the 1v1 between Gracchus and Flawless, and they're just <laughs> they're, they're, they're just staying here. I respect that. I respect the hell out of that, Clement, because if this were my team, I'd be like, you know what? You guys do what you want. I need to get the lane. That is a Flawless play if I've ever seen one. Oh, Flawless. Uh, he's You're going to die for it, buddy. There's the dredge line. He's going to have to flash away. He does. Turns around with the overtow, but not going to find a whole lot of damage. Lumal is not going to find anything with the Lux either. Now JD Gaming still trying for the level <laughs> one. <laughs> what is happening with this level one? I will say that JD Gaming are actually coming out ahead of this because they've given a zero a lot of time to scale up. Now there's a sunken cost fallacy here where Suning's like, you know what? Flawless doesn't have flash. Let's just kill him. Oh my god. All right. Undertow lands. Yigao rotating in towards the mid lane. He wants to try and stop this fight. SMLZ going for the flank. If they turn on him, Weiwei really low. He smites it, gets the kill. Flawless oh. still alive. They take out Weiwei, though, on the return. First blood's going down to SMLZ. He goes on the wrong side. JDG double flashes have to come out, and that was not the level one they were looking for. <laughs> uh, no, it was not. No, it definitely was not. And here's a problem with getting priority in the bot side, especially when you're blue side. It doesn't prevent the enemy red side bot lane from going into the blue side jungle. Uh, I, I think that was a critical mistake that they made there. And if you look at Azir's position, it was actually cut off from Maple. Could not come around to help out. So even though they get the CS leads, it, it turns out pretty damn bad for JD Gaming. In the entire bot side, there are no flashes left. That should be a clear signal for Weiwei to get ganks there. May also be a three buff here from Weiwei. He knows the blue buff hasn't been picked up just yet, but it looks like Flawless in return is going to be rotating directly over towards that Scuttle Crab, but it's already going to be taken by the time he gets there as Weiwei throws in the last auto. We'll catch out Weiwei, but doesn't matter. Not going to be able to find the fight, so Flawless a little bit behind at this point. Yeah. And this is not where you want to be as an Olaf. Now, Olaf is very strong in terms of clearing his tempo leads. Uh oh, Ooh, no flash. Lands. Imp still alive for the time being. SMLZ took a lot of damage there from Lumao as well. So, really, JDG even up that trade pretty nicely. Yeah, I forgot to mention that Lumao actually came away with the blue buff. Unfortunate Why? timing. <laughs> <laughs> Taking a look at the, uh, at the runes right here, we do have. Legends Bloodline, which is going to give you that 12% lifesteal. I do believe the build for Kog'Maz are still going to go for the Blade of the Ruin King into the uh, Rage Blade. We haven't seen Kog'Maz in a long time, but I think that's still the build. We really haven't, but 10 CS lead here for Imp, and as you said, the CS lead really big. Imp, he is in so much trouble. He's just going to walk into them, try and get a return kill. He's pretty close to getting one onto SMLZ, but not going to be able to find it in the end. Yeah, there was no way to really prevent that. The bot lane was always going to be pushed forward. That's what happened from the early stages. Whoa! Oh, zoom! Flashes in, almost gets the uh, kill. Does on the bird get him? No. Potions there. That was a lesson, Pew Pew. <laughs> Don't let me see you in my lane ever again, boy. Uh, I love that neck crook from Zoom. <laughs> you can see how irritated he was. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> next time, next time he'll find it. Oh, here comes the teleport. They're looking for this. It's going to be answered here by the side of Sooning. They're going to get the root onto SMLZ. They need to get the kill on him pretty quickly. Zoom's here. Another teleport coming in from JDG. This could be just a straight up five on five. Lawless oh. is pretty low. He's going to die to SMLZ's passive there, but JDG have been able to pick up two in this game. Clement, what is happening? Uh, well, that was really fun. All of the lanes just giving up their lane priority to get there as soon as possible. Oh, but no. I do want to mention something. Clement. SMLZ is huge. I, I'd also like to mention something about SMLZ. Take a look at his items. What? Yeah. He's going Man and Moon Kog'Maw. Okay. <laughs> I don't... I don't know how to feel about this one, Clement. Care to care to <laughs> chime in? Uh, I haven't seen that. <laughs> uh, that's not the way that SMLZ has played Kogman before. Now he's been known for having some wonky builds. Uh, we, we've seen a lot of times go for like Blade of the Ruin King and then transition back into an IE build when there's tanks on the opposing side. But we really haven't seen uh, Mana Mune Kogma at all. This is this is something new, even for SMLZ. <laughs> I hate to say it, but I'm tempted to try it in solo. Here. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> At least not when we're doing. <laughs> of course, of course. I'll leave that one to my random teammates. But now Flawless is going to go into the invade with the help of Lumal. They'll pick up the Gromp as well. And 
This early game has been really hectic, and it's hard for me to suss out exactly who's been winning at this point, because on one hand, you have the CS lead on the sides of Imp and Yagao, but on the other, as you said, SMLZ is massive. Three, one, and zero on this Kog'Maw already. The way this game is going, current situation, I still give it to JD Gaming. I think their mid lane has gotten a lot more out of their situation. Their top lane is winning. And they have Flawless doing exactly what he needs to do, make sure that there aren't ganks coming down into this bot side. They're still very worried about Imp dying again in lane. His flash still isn't up. Flash will be up very soon, though. Biu Biu getting engaged again here by Zoom. Conqueror's been proxed by Biu Biu. Has the Scion ult stolen, but I don't think he wants to go in for the re-engage there. Yep, just looking for that second Kingslayer in the, uh, in the fight. But uh, Zoom knows those cooldowns well. He's not going to give him that opportunity. Oof. Now, Weiwei's been taking a lot of damage here. One level down. He's looking for that gank in the bot side, but Flawless is well aware of it. Flawless is just waiting here. Um, I'm sure his bottom lane is appreciating it. Now he's looking for the gank. Oh, no. The binding goes wide, and here comes Weiwei. But they're going to go into SMLC oh. first. He gets taken down. The return kill onto Buma, but Yugao is coming down. Does he have the Shurima Shuffle for Weiwei? He's looking for it. Gets the damage onto Weiwei, so no execute for you, my friend, the Sooning jungler. To the second death for the team in this fight. That was not a worthwhile trade for Sooning whatsoever. I felt like their better idea was actually just to disengage for SMLZ. And this is the Yagao that we want to see. He's been roaming around the map so frequently, even against the Jace lane. Now, interesting that the Silas is going for the Conqueror now in the top lane, but it does give him a little bit of scrapping power. We're going to take a look at this bottom fight again. Yeah, now I, I want to see if there was a chance for Weiwei to actually just disengage this. Uh, probably not. Probably not. I understand why he did that. No flash on Kogma. But what I'm a bit surprised about is Suning's bot lane still stepping up that far forward. They clearly saw a flawless. Communication seems to be a little bit off between SMLZ and his own jungler. Well, SMLZ at the very least has finished his mana moon. Not going to upgrade just yet, but I can't believe I'm saying that about a Kog'Maw. But you know what? Sometimes new builds get to surprise you from solo queue. Yigal putting a lot of damage there onto Maple. We'll be able to pick up the first turret plating solo as well. So that's going to be working quite well for him. As Flawless continues to hunt down Weiwei, he's got the level 6 at this point. So Weiwei has no reason, no way to contest this even. Maple starting to roam up, but Yigao is here as well. So if this turns into a 2 on 2, this is one that JDG are going to win. Almost certainly. Sword Art's rotating up as well. And Bubio is coming down. So this is the point where JDG need to start saying, all right, see you later. And I like how JD Gaming are instantly backing out. They haven't spotted the bot side for a while. There's a possibility, even though they don't spot Sword Art himself, they have someone like Luma who thinks pretty much in the same way. So they're going to uh, disengage and allow Weiwei to get his level 6. Now, I still think this entire map is going to be pulled down towards the bot side. These 9 kills have happened nowhere else but the bot lane. And unfortunately, it will continue. Weiwei with that level 6, that's a clear goal sig uh, go sign to then engage onto Luma. Have the opportunity for it, but Luma currently 2 1 and 2. He's pretty, sitting pretty happily here in the bottom lane. And while they are downing kills at this point, the bot lane for JDG seems to be pretty happy with this. They're up in items thanks to the CS advantage, or about even rather. People tend to forget how strong Cosma actually is in lane. With the extra range advantage and just like the HP shred, he beats out a lot of hyper carries. And he also has a sustain for it as well. And you have to remember that he's running fleet footwork plus the uh, plus the uh, the vamp scepter at this point. So he's going to be able to put down a lot of harass. Maple as well doing okay in his lane. He's down two kills, but granted he has given none of them over. So at the very least, things are fairly even across the board. And the dragon has not been a point of contention in this game because it is a cloud drake. There's not really a whole lot you want to do with that. However. Rift Herald still on the field. Everyone wants to do something with that at some point. This is not the strong side of the map for Sooning, so I, I'm a little surprised that they're going for this play instead. The Gauss here, way, way so low already. Goes golden, but it's too late. Flawless gets absolutely dunked to hell. And now JD Gaming gonna try and contest as best they can for Sooning off of this, but they've already lost their jungler for the next 10 seconds. You know, they shouldn't have won that, but stopwatch 
Saves the day. <laughs> Instantly takes out Wallace before he can do anything. Yeah, really well played there by Weiwei to throw it out just before, or after ulting and just before dying there. And BP also did a good job body blocking Zoom from coming down the river. If you've been watching the top side, like, Zoom has actually had priority here for a long time, but you can't outplay the burst. Despite the priority he's had, Yubio is actually up in CS, so this game is significantly more impressive than the last one coming in as the performance from Yubio. Because last game, he was not looking too hot on that gangplank, but now he's kept even in CS, he's kept up even without jungle intervention. That's just one of those situations where I feel like Scion is going to have a hard time against, uh, against Silas. A lot of these matchups you do see the uh, the Kingslayer being max first, just get that cooldown a bit lower and make sure you have that constant sustain. So it is a matchup that slowly goes into the favor of the Bruiser as time passes. A lot of damage going down there onto Bio Bio here. Huh. Actually Uber taking turn. the chain lap first. He's got Conquer as well for sustaining true damage, but JDG should be able to pick up the Rift Herald at this point. They pulled it out and should have been spotted away by that control ward from Sooning, but no contest is going to be able to come out. So JDG, despite losing the fight around the Rift Herald the first time, are going to be able to pick it up. Seems like their Baron strategy works for Rift Herald as well, Clement. Just keep on trying. Second try was the charm this time. We're going to see Silas ulting back into the lane. Beautiful little choo-choo train in the top lane. But now that we've gotten into about the 13 and a half minute mark and Sooning has been doing so well in the early game, are we still feeling confident about the scaling here for JDG? Uh, overall, yes. I think Yigao is in a situation where he's going to do a lot more than what Maple can provide at this point. Maple has not found any leeway in this game. He has two assists to his name, but hasn't really been able to suppress Yigao. And Azir is just the clear winner when it comes to scaling on that front. Uh, however, I will say this bot lane is going a lot better than I imagined it would. Seems like SMLZ knows exactly how he wants to play that Kog'Maw. Way we're going to be able to pick up the Cloud Drake, but just a Cloud Drake. So for the time being, JDG going to be happy with just trying to take down this tower. They will be able to secure it, but Maple's up here. They have Sharima's Legacy popped as the extra tower in the mid lane to keep them safe for the time being. Predator's coming in from way away. It's been popped, but he's not going aggressive with it. So JD Gaming should be able to back out of this one. See Sharima's Legacy giving Maple a warning signal. Just keeping that red dot on his forehead. <laughs> we'll fall down there. It, it's so easy to forget that play. Like, I, I thought Suning was going to get the kill onto the Azir, but of course you still have your tower there. Great defense on the other side. Oh, not able to steal away the Scuttle Crab, so Weiwei will secure that one. And now, Suning starting to look a little bit better, but like you said, the scaling oh. for Yagao is significantly higher than it is for Maple. This is very interesting from uh, Maple. I, I was wondering what the pickaxe was for, and we're actually going to see a double tier build coming, yep. out from, uh, coming out from the carries. We've been seeing this a lot more, uh, especially since the nerfs to Jace as well. The mirror mana just seems to scale a little bit better. We see sometimes the split push build, Blade of the Ruin King, Black Cleaver, but definitely been seeing a lot more mana immune coming out uh, in recent weeks. Yeah, it does make sense. When the lethality is not that useful post laning phase, then uh, you got to get yourself some more juice in there. More juice in the tank, but this does give a little bit more late game scaling. But Flawless, he's going to have to worry about the early game here. Pops the Ragnarok, not going to be able to get away. That's so much damage in from Maple. The Execute just slapping him down. Zoom has to be careful here because Maple's up into the top side still. So now Sooning starting to look pretty strong. Yeah, that's a very interesting lane swap coming out from Sooning. They don't actually finish off the bottom side. Instead, they read that JD Game is going to do the proactive swap and they match it. You know, not taking the easy turret in the bot lane that can be taken, but just preventing losses from the top side. And they're going to get a lot of stuff out of this. I don't, I'm not sure this is the place you want to teleport down on. You know, that was not necessarily the safest teleport by Zoom, but he is very tanky, so at the very least, it will take a lot to take him down. And JD Gaming going to be able to defend the mid lane push off of this. So now, JD, Art. I wouldn't necessarily say on the back foot, but they're definitely not putting their best foot forward at this point. They're down a little bit of gold, but they just seem to not have control over the game at this point. And Sooning seem to be the ones major, uh, majority dictating the game. Solo lanes are going even in bot side for Sooning are winning. They're coming out in terms of the priority. So that's the reason that JD Gaming seem behind in the tempo lead. However, if you put them in a 5v5, I'm still going for JD Gaming on the win. I feel like their team composition is just 
far more suited. Uh, it's easier to get into the back line compared to something like uh, JD Gaming. Like, I, I think the best ultimate that Bubu can take for the composition on Suning would be the Emperor's Divide. Make sure that nobody can touch SMLZ. An option is available. Bubu is going to be spotted out here by Flawless, but Flawless might be the one getting picked off. Ragnarok been popped by both him and Bubu. But he will make it out of there alive. And now Suning rotate back towards the mid lane. Continuing the push, continuing the pressure. A lot of good uses of Suning's priority here. They're willing to move their parts faster than the enemy team. You see Bubu there already in position to call out Flawless. And Flawless hasn't been able to get anything going for a very long time now. Like every time he's walked into the river, he's found Suning members to block him out. And that just gives more time for, uh, for for the mid lane to kind of scale up. I, I'm very curious on what SMLZ's full build is going to look like. Yeah, so far with the Bo Blade of the Ruin King and the Mana Unit is definitely an interesting build coming out here from the AD carry of Suning. And now JD Gaming going to try and capitalize on the space that they know they have after spotting everyone out on the bottom side of the map. But Zoom, he's going to be on the opposite end of that space and therefore going to have a little bit of problems. Has to ult away to safety, but they will secure the top lane tower as a result, putting JDG a little bit in the lead with gold. Small lead here. There's only a single person here on the mid lane, but great <laughs> final spark. It's a wave clear that. You often forget how useful that is as a wave clear tool. I think we're going to find our first big team fight here. Infernal yep. Break already spawning in 36 seconds. Uh, Maple's going to come down, doesn't have teleport. All is set. We finally get to prove him I'm right. <laughs> this is actually decent timing for both AD carries because while, oh no, it's better timing for SLZ yes, now. I he just, saw just that one. finished stacking. This is now going to be a really scary fight for JDG because they don't know that it's finished stacking for one. And Imp, yes, he has the Man of of his own. He's picked up the Rage Blade, so he does have the Q Evolve. But on the back end of it, you do not have a Mura Mana. It's good priority for Suning as well. They have both the mid lane and the bot lane wave uh, stacking. JDG need to play this one really carefully. Gigao, not there just yet. Doesn't have the teleport up either, so he's going to have to walk real quick. Or Suning are just going to be able to rush this one down. They have Vision on it. Loom out looking to maybe try and poke it out. But 2,000 health, 1,500 health. Is it going to get stolen away? No. Secure from Weiwei coming in. But Loom out is in a whole lot of trouble. He's got to get out of this one. Undertow going to keep him safe for the time being. Has to flash away from the living artillery that is the Kog'Maw. Yeah, very good use of Suning's priority in lane. Oh, that was a one where JD Gaming on even footing. They could have found a way to contest that. But Suning made sure that they never got the angle. A little bit of wave clear attempt coming in there from Lumao. But now at this point, with the Infernal Drake in their pocket, with the completed Muramana and Blade of the Ruin King on SMLZ, I don't know, Clement. You're saying JDG still looking good, but Suning are starting to look pretty good themselves. For sure, for sure. Uh, I think the way Suning needs to win this fight is they need to be more tactical with their abilities. I I'm looking at CC chains that they can do to maybe slow down JD Gaming's bot lane. Uh, to show, slow down their front line. I'd really like them to see to try and take a fight right now because everyone has ultimates on JD Gaming. Everyone has flashes except for Lumal. Oh, here we go again. Okay. <laughs> oh, guys. The JD special. Guys, you can't just keep uh, going for these Barons. This is a Gragas with a level lead. I, I really don't think they can take this. Why do they keep doing this? You can't just force a Baron whenever you want and hope it works out. I know it's been working for the last two games in a row, but come on. Can I be honest? Like, this is how JD Gaming have been playing recently the, the entire time. Oh, oh no. Not they get the return it. kill on a Sword Art, at least. Yep, not out worth it for Sword Art. He does expend his Flash as well for that one. Trying to get the pick. It will stop the Baron take. So, Clement, I want to play a little game with you. What are the odds? Or how soon do you bet JDG are going to go back onto it? Because I'm going to say 22:30. <laughs> We're going to see them go back onto that Baron. Oh, why JDK? Well, well, here's well, uh, here's why they finished the Merman. Can I tell you? This is going to be a horrible strategy for JD Gaming if they do this again. You're going up against a Jace, a Gragas, and a Cogma. Yep. They will poke the living hell out of you if you keep on doing these Barons. Well, I, I don't think this one was consequential at all. They just traded uh, traded kills here on the supports. 
worked at all. But the idea for JD Gaming to continuously do that is so questionable. There was even a teleport on Bubu. They're not even getting a 5v4. And Flawless was actually under leveled. He still is under leveled. Yeah, just really dangerous idea coming out of here from the side of JD Gaming. Maple gonna get a chunk there in with the shock blast. I don't think they're actually under that much pressure to, to force these barons. It feels like at this point, this is the way they remember how to macro, and they're just deciding this is how they have to macro at this point. Because, to be fair, Clement... <laughs> do you see how hard it is? <laughs> yeah, I do. I, my question now is if JDG see how hard it is, because it feels like at the very least it's an easy strategy to execute on, because there's no question of what you do, there's no question of when you do it. You take Baron, when do you take Baron? Uh, when do you stop taking Baron? I feel like the all the JD gaming really need to do, they just wait for Suning to, to group up, they run Scion straight through the mid lane, they have a front to back team fight, and they should be able to win. It's, it's not that, I, I don't think it's actually that complicated, it's just what their comp provides them. That said though, I'm not sure how much damage JDG are going to be able to put out because Yagao still hasn't finished his second item, he's mostly sitting on components. He has the Seeker's Arm Guard, sure and he's got the stopwatch, so he's working towards the Zonias, but he also picked up the Oblivion Orb. So he's got at least a lot of magic pen. It feels like JDG think they're safe enough to go to this mid lane tower now that they saw Boo split pushing in the bottom lane. That was a great move by JD Gaming. They really did ca catch SMLZ off guard. He was clearing the left, right side of the jungle. So I, I just want to see JD Gaming do that more. You just, just force 5v5s. <laughs> Should be an Evolve coming out here from Imp very soon if he doesn't already have it for the E as well. So his combat potential is only going up. Unfortunately for him, so is SMLC. He's picked up. Oh, here no. we go. Here maybe the fight you were looking for, Clement. Zoom not going to be able to find the ultimate there. Blade of the Ruin King pops on the Zoom, as is the Predator. But it looks like neither of them going to find a whole lot of anything at this point. Yeah, close situation for Zoom. If he got knocked back by the Explosive Cask, he would be dead right there. Ultimate but I love the idea. Available. Ultimate still available for both teams, accepting Zoom's ultimate, of course, but it's quarter of the way back. As well as he's taking a little bit of damage. The wave clear here from JDG is they're saving Grace in the moment. But Flawless taking a ton of damage from Maple, and this is the danger when you're fighting around Baron in these closed corridors. You were talking about it so much when they first tried the Baron, but there is all this poke from Sooning. Oh, no. Sooning starting up the Baron now, and they have the time for it. No teleport on Yagao. There's a teleport on Zoom, but he still does not have his ultimate half time remaining. Teleport is coming in. Zoom just finished his teleport, so they will force Sooning off the Baron at the very least. If Yagao gets here in time, he could find the Shurima Shuffle, get a pick onto Sooning, and JDG can do their favorite play of all time. Now, but JD Gaming are going to try to force Sooning off, make sure to delay their backs. So they're going to have to, they're going to be able to run the entire map themselves. I want to see what they're going to do with it. It looks like Kaisa and is going to rotate towards the bottom side of the map, pick up the Ocean Drake, at least get themselves a little bit of something. This Maple start split pushing into the top side of the map. So at this point for Sooning, JDG just need a 5 on five. What are Sooning looking to do to prevent that from happening, to get themselves into an advantageous position? They need to look for the poke, and they need to look for Biu Biu to be a good a side lane split pusher. Biu Biu does have that ability now. He's going for the full AP build. He might not be able to kill Scion straight up, but he should be able to force a wave and have priority over that side of the map. So JD Gaming, uh, so, for, so for Sooning, they have two outs. One, they group up faster, they use their poke to their advantage, and they just force JD Gaming away when they're low health. And the other one is, you know, just just let Boo Boo do the 4-1. For JD Gaming, I, I think their, their game plan is quite simple. You don't want to take too much damage. You want to run into the Baron Pit with Sooning there, hopefully as an entire unit and just wipe them out. See if they're able to figure that out in a few minutes' time. But now Zoom split pushing into the bottom side. He doesn't have teleport, so this is really, really scary for him. I will have to say that this is not a team composition where JD Gaming will be able to find a turn. It's incredibly difficult because Suni can stay on their side of the ramp. They don't need to ever enter the river. They have enough poke just staying up there. So even if Zoom wants to turn, I don't think he'll be able to find anything. And I think that's why JD Gaming are not rushing towards the Baron. They understand that this Baron take is going to be much harder than game one. No one's going to be standing in the river waiting for them to, to have a collision with Scion. So they're... What they want to do is they really want to force lane priority in the mid lane, force Suning to react to that, and as they walk out in the mid, 
just get that big full on uh, full on team fight. Now's a really good time for it as well. Imp has hit his item timings. He's at three items already. Has the Runin's Hurricane, the Muramana, and the Ginsu's Rage Blade. So he is raring for a fight at this point. The question is just how to get it. Yubio has stolen the ultimate away from Zoom. So both of them are going to have it available for this fight. Flashes up across the board from JDG and Sooning. So if this is a fight that breaks out, it is going to be a bloody one. That ocean is so valuable for JD Gaming at this point. Their entire back lane can heal up from it. You don't need to worry. And I think if this game drags on in the current position that it looks like it will be, uh, JD Gaming should be able to find one of these team fights. All they're waiting for is just priority in mid. Suiting have to react to it. JDG need to be careful. Predator's been propped by Weiwei. He's trying to find a pick. Blue Mouth taking so much damage. There's the cast that did a ton of damage to poke him out, but not going to be able to find a kill. They know, however, that Lumao has been forced to back, so this may be their key to rotate onto the Baron. Multiple shock blasts finding their way, but Lumao knows he has to stay. He's still around for the ultimate. He's not expected to take damage anyway in these team fights. Teleport coming in from Yagao now. Ultimate has been popped by Bio Bio. Of course, the stolen ultimate from Zoom. Sooning have been forced off again. Sooning are taking a page from JDG's playbook and not understanding the same things that JDG was not understanding. Uh, However, they've been less successful, it feels like. Yeah, I have to say that was a very questionable turn on Bu Bu's end. I, I don't think you want to fight up that rap without vision against someone like a Scion. So, you know, I, I, I feel like if you wanted to do that, you should have waited for, for the ME team to at least show itself and use it as a zoning tool. And instead, it was a bit preemptive on Bu Bu's side. And they will have to reset. And now Yagao no longer has just components. He's got the three item spike. He's got the uh, Morellonomicon. He's got the Nash's Tooth. He's got the Zonias. He's got a lot of fighting power as well. And if JDG are able to find a fight around this Baron, they should also find success. But I would like to note as well, look at the timer in the upper left hand corner. One minute until another Ocean Drake. If JDG are able to pick that one up without Sooning rotating onto the Baron, suddenly the poke matters less, less, and less. But JDG, they're going for the play <laughs> once again. They're like, Ocean uh, Drake, who needs no. that? <laughs> Predator's coming in. Weiwei has the ultimate available. If he's able to split the team, that is the fight one for Sooning. JDG know this. They're going in for the engage. This may be the 5v5 they were looking for. They land on the Sword Art. Bilbio as well. Sword Art goes golden, Zoom goes golden to follow it up. JDG have put down a ton of damage, but SMLZ is just free firing in the back line. Imp trying to get some autos off the cast, lands him into the oh. middle of the fight. He flashes out. They get the Shurima shuffle onto Mabel. SMLZ still alive, but the shutdown has gone down into multiple members. Two members down for Sooning so far. They may be able to find Bio Bio. They find Sword Art. SMLZ is going to be the last one alive. This should be the ace for JD Gaming. Breathtaking fights over and over again, and JD Gaming have that persistence. Sooning, they made the crucial mistake of walking into River. Now, we were talking about JD Gaming should not be able to find a turn with this composition, but I have to say, Sooning kind of gave it to them. <laughs> Sword Art was locked in place. I, I feel like what the Sooning play should be, well, if you want to make it a 50-50, let's make it a 50-50. I, I have the superior poke. I'm just going to keep on dealing damage with you to you on top of the Baron Pit, and I have a Gragas for a steal. I'm not sure why Sooning felt the need to rush into the uh, into the river, and I have to say, JD Gaming do have the superior front-to-back team fight. They already get Sword Art almost low. Sword Art's already backing out. Weiwei goes in, doesn't get the correct pop, and Yagao takes the Nautilus ultimate and kills Maple at the same time. That was a hero play for them. Basically a two for one, and SMLZ is staring at the full team of JD Gaming without any of his teammates, and that will be the ace. JDG now have the Baron on their side. The Ocean Drake still available as well. They should be picking that one up as you see three members rotate down to it. And now they can mitigate the poke. They have so much of this Baron buff remaining. So this is what they were waiting for. They found the 5v5 they wanted. Suddenly they're like, yes, the Let's Baron go. play worked. We did it, guys. This feels like Groundhog's Day on Baron. <laughs> Like, if you don't understand how it worked the first time, let's just run it five more times. You're not getting out of this scenario until someone takes the Baron. And unfortunately for Sooning, it just didn't have the right play. Oh, but now they might have it. They're rotating down onto Zoom. Zoom not going to be able to find a whole lot of anything. The healing coming in from Blue Shield, thanks to the Chalice. Athene's doing dividends there for him. Now, JDG are going to push up into the mid lane inhibitor with the aid of the tower from 
the passive of Azir. So they're going to be very hard to push off, especially now that the poke is not going to stick. They did secure both Ocean Drakes, so this is so much regen. But I don't like Imp being the one alone in bottom lane. I think it will be fine for now. Uh, JD Gaming, for them, they're looking for a critical team fight to just end the game. SMLZ got no sums. If they've been keeping track of that, they should be pushing this incredibly hard. Someone going into the back line will instantly kill them. Lumal can just flash onto SMLZ. Bibo tries for the ultimate engage, but uh... <laughs> oh no, Zoom used his too. Backwards, all right. That one did not work out for him, but doesn't matter. Bubu wasn't able to find the engage. And for the time being, JDG will still be able to stall this out, still be able to look for this tower. Suning cannot defend this. They should be giving this one up, actually. Once the next wave hits. We'll see if they decide to. Maple looking on the side for a little bit of poke. Passive has fallen down from his ear. Sword Art looking for the engage, not going to be able to find it. JDG should still be fine if Weiwei doesn't find anything into the back line. Predator's expired, so he's not going to be able to find an easy cask at this point. And JDG slowly but surely pushing into the base of Suning. This is a great dance from JD Gaming. They're staying here so long that the Ocean Drake is actually kicking in. Their back line's not going to take damage. Here comes the Death Charge, but it lands onto Zoom first, then it lands onto Imp. A lot of damage returned already. Imp just goes all the way in. He finds a lot of damage. SMLZ still free firing in the back. They need to take him out. But in the time being, the only person to go down so far is Flawless and Sword Art. JDG should be able to take this one down. They get the stun onto Maple. They get the binding to follow. Take him down. The Baron buff is still on. Four members remaining. Suning need to make the miracle hold if they want to stay in this game. Looks like they might do just that. Baron buff still remaining on this wave that is pushing in from JD Gaming, but they don't feel confident to end it just yet. JD Gaming needs to run. Their front line is completely out of HP. They can wait for a while, wait for themselves to regen back. But very successful push for them overall. Like we were talking about, with no summoners on SMLZ, all they need to do is just rush up towards him, and they should force Suning back. Unfortunately for Suning, making the last stand in, in behind their inhibitor, a little bit questionable. I felt like that was something they needed to, to basically give up and allow JD Gaming to kind of equalize uh, with their Baron buff. So if we take a look at this fight, a lot closer than we thought it is, but Zoom, he's just too damn tanky. Look at how little HP actually loses, and Sword Art goes in, gets taken out. He's not that tanky of a Nautilus at this point. Good trade back onto Suni, but they expended so much of their damage just taking care of JD Gaming's front line that there's nothing they can do to the back line. But take a look at the items across the board as well after this falls down. 3,800 gold from the Baron buff. Very impressive from JD Gaming. More importantly, Elder Drake spawning in just a minute and a half, so we'll keep our eyes on that because it has almost the same timer as the Baron, so we may even see an objective trade. But we have a back from JDG after that massive push. You have a fully stacked Dark Seal, Zonias, Nashers, Morellanomicon, and Rabidons on your gout. He has <laughs> so much damage. And Imp as well has finally picked up the Guardian Angel, so he's able to make the same aggressive plays he made last team fight. but he has so much security in them. He has so much safety. This is a problem for Suni because we look over, we were wondering what the hell SMLZ was building, and I'm going to be honest, Clement, I'm still wondering. <laughs> he's gone for Blade of the Ruin King, Lord Dominix, plus Muramana, and a Zeal item and Hexdrinker. Feels he's... like it doesn't do a whole lot of any one thing. No, it's just banking on the Blade of the Ruin King to take him through. He's using that passive procs to finish someone off, but it, it's going to be so difficult. There's not enough crit to really go through Zoom at this point, and the backline can trade blows with him quite well. I think it's perfectly reasonable for him to just fly in and trade lives with SMLZ. If they get that down, they just win. Tried it last team fight, did work out for him pretty well. And now that he has the GA, he can do it again. Because SMLZ, like we said, doesn't have a GA sitting on him. Has finished the Runin's Hurricane, however, so he'll have a little bit more AoE with his build. Lumal, can he find the... Oh, he does the get the catch! Oh, binding on SMLZ! There he goes! The AD carry of Suning is down, and Imp is just free-firing here in the middle of the team fight. He's not safe, but he doesn't care. He's got the GA, he's got the damage, he's got everything he needs to get JDG the win of the team fight. Only Biu Biu and Weiwei remaining, but it looks like they're going to be going down pretty soon as well. Super minions pouring into the base of Suning. Suning has... The Lux ultimate there for Bubu, trying to wave clear desperately, but this is the last Nexus Tower. The flash in from Zoom. They get the CC. Bubu goes golden. Oh. It's the GA popped there for Imp. Can they he find it? He should still be alive. He's they dead. Know they get the shutdown. 
Zoom still alive, as is Lumao. The it's Nexus not over. is down to half health, and Sooning look to have saved the game for themselves as Zoom gets taken down in the base. The ult does come up, so they should survive, but looking at these timers here, Sooning actually have an open, uh, open chance to go for the Baron. The Baron and the Elder Clement, they have the opportunity to go for both, depending on how long it takes them. There's no bot lane anymore for JD Gaming. It's going to take a long time, and this is going to keep Sooning alive for a long while. Teleport coming in there from Bubu. And they're going to rotate up towards the top side, but it looks like Yigao is literally just going to solo the Elder Drake at this time. And he should be able to do it with the double ocean. It's not going to stop the procs from the healing, so just look at how much he is regening off of this. Oh, but oh, look no. at the base race. Zoom, he's going in for it. He has ultimate available as well. If they want to put down some CC, there's a fight around the Baron. They just need to stop the base for the time being. Elder has been popped. Maple trying to stop the Zoom from split pushing. He's going for the x -Pecky. He has so much health. Baron secured by Sooning, and they're trying to get the fight onto Flawless. Flawless is still surviving for the time Zoom's being. Zoom's going to die Zoom for nothing. Zoom is in trouble. The ultimate comes in, but Yagao is here to put out some auxiliary damage, but it's not going to be enough. Zoom will eventually go down into his passive. What? Oh, the Shurima oh! shuffle from Yagao. Absolutely massive team fight here for JD Gaming. He goes down, he though. picked off by Biobio, and he saves the base once again. This is insane. SMLZ is still alive, but he can't find the living artillery onto the targets. What, what are the death timers? 47 seconds onto Imp. Sooning now have their inhibitors up as well. They, they could make a straight push toward the mid lane. 40 seconds that they have remaining. They have the Baron buff for another 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Elder buff still on JD Gaming for the time being. A minute 30 left on that one. They're JDG. all going to go back to base, though. They're not going to push their advantages. <laughs> so I said I was going to scream, but that was a little excessive. Yeah, that was absolutely insane from the two teams. Great body buff like Sword Art, making sure that Flawless was nowhere near. And all Flawless needs to do is really just stop the backs, but SMLZ flashes in. Nearly gets the kill on Luba. How does he kill Imp? Oh, he gets tagged by the by the Q earlier on. But wait, wait a minute, Imp is still alive. We, we still need to see how they uh, how they finish off these kills. Sword Art baiting. Oh, there's a ward there. Great vision. Ooh. Imp thought he caught Sooning unawares, but wasn't the case. It's gonna be full build from SMLZ. And the red buff was not secured there by Imp. He needs to be really careful because the entirety of Sooning is here trying to take him out. Ultimate going to come in. Red buff was stolen, but SMLZ is down. The shutdown for JD Gaming. Sharima Shuffle not going to stop anyone from getting over the wall, but Imp's still alive. Finally gets taken out. Yagao trying to do his best to do the damage. Weiwei is still alive. Goes golden. Yagao still alive, able to put out the damage, and he is just pumping it out, I tell you. Bilbio, the last one alive. Triple kill for Flawless and JD Gaming. They should be able to run this one through to the Nexus. Win with SMLZ and lose with SMLZ. He was standing right in the front lines. Took everything to the face. Not where he really wanted to be. And that was just so overconfident from Sooning. They're going to pay the lesson for that. And JD Gaming are going to find their first win in the summer split. JD Gaming, their first win in the summer split. They win the e-commerce war. They keep their lead and they keep their pride here in the LPL summer split. Insane last moments of the fight. It was incredibly back and forth, but the persistence from JD pays off in the end. It felt like endless streams of Baron dances. Unfortunately for Sooning, they had a worse read on it. That it's just running with that poke composition, why would you ever need to run into River? I think that was just such a weird, turn from Sunni. They had even levels, they had a Gragas on top, right behind the Baron Pit. No vision from JD Gaming in that section. But they came down and gave the perfect scenario to JD Gaming. They gave them the 5v5. And the 5v5 was all it took for JD Gaming to bring that one back. And they took fight after fight, Clement. This was a nail biter minute to minute, but JD Gaming just had the superior 5 versus 5 in the end. Even SMLZ's crazy builds could not save Sooning from defeat in this one. Ooh, JD Gaming, they have that one and only weapon, the rock in their hand. It might not be sophisticated, but it is, it is brutally, uh, brutally effective. <laughs> they will eventually beat you down with it. You will eventually end up without a nexus. Both of these games followed a very similar pattern. Dead even until the Baron swinged over to JD Gaming's side. A am I super happy with this? how this game went? 
Not really. Not really. I hope not. <laughs> not, really. <laughs> I really hope not it, it was a bit weird on on both ends, and uh, I still think that Suning hasn't really displayed the ability to shot call to a very high uh, to to a very high level. They have that general instinct where if they have the run of the map and they're running into something like a Sivir with the Yumi or the Sona and the Tom Kench, then they have a general direction on where they're going. They're able to chase down kills. But when it's Baron fight a full on display over and over again, they missed a couple of beats in there. That <laughs> There was a lot that was missed here and there. But you know what? For JD Gaming, this is this is such a huge success for them because they have not found it yet this split. Yes. And they finally have that confidence to come back into this split and say, okay, we know what we can do now. Sure, we're a bit of a one-note team at the moment because that one note is Baron. <laughs> and it, it works out horribly for them, like 70% of the time. But eventually when it happens, the 30%, it seems to be a successful method for them to at least brute force a little bit of macro, get themselves back in the game. And I'm not saying it's perfect, Clement. If I were, I should be just, like, shot. Because that's a bad idea. <laughs> well, but, if you wait for people to make a mistake, sometimes they will. Exactly. They, they, they understood the situation they were in. They just kept doing it until Suning finally was like, hey, let's go into the river. Yeah, hey, this is going to be <laughs> fine. Like, why, why do you ever need to go into the river? If you just poke it so that JD Gaming can win. Are you not paying attention, Clement? <laughs> uh, un unfortunately for us, Amelzi not able to find a win on his sign signature champion. And we're really seeing JD Gaming kind of shake out where they belong in the entire standings. They lost to LNG. They lost to FBX. They lost to, e lost to EDG. But they proved that they're still a step above suiting gaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tentatively say top half. I, yeah, think, I think that's fair after today. Yeah. Uh, however... Bottom of the top half, definitely, after today's performance. Because there is a little bit of macro problems, a little bit of, I feel like, communication problems that came out in that series. But I am very impressed that JDG were able to take down the win because Suning, based on their prior series, were looking fairly good. Suning had not dropped a match before this. They were actually one of our, you know, flawless teams in the in the LPL. But they were relatively one no team, and I think this does expose a lot of their a lot of their issues with the team that once you wait, once you take away those compositions that they used to win the prior three three matches, you find them kind of lacking after that. The depth really isn't there for their team comps, and this one was a very peculiar one. This one was we saw two new champions from from Suning being displayed at Po comp with uh, not a lot of sustained damage. It was, it was a little bit bit of all over the place composition. And I, I want to see how Suning try to hold, hone in their identity in the league. It's going to be a very difficult process from them. They're, they're very single-minded in terms of the bot side. They're all about their hyperscaling AD carry. They don't look like they're going to they're gonna be playing a kill lane in the bot side anytime soon. So a lot of blank parts from this team. They're going to be able to take down teams on the lower than them that have less talent. This this is a team that, in my eyes, still has a lot of all-stars on the team. Maple, Sword Art, SMLZ. But I don't think they can punch above their weight. I don't really see that potential yet. I, I think they're going to need to develop it because when we came in and first talked about Suning, it was a lot about communications and issues. It was a lot about synergy. And it was a lot about figuring out what their identity is. I feel like those three things are very much still issues for the team. And that draft was sort of confusing, but it was the same thing that they did in, I believe, the Snake Series last split where they were like, okay, this is match point. Put everything in the SMLZ basket and everything will work out. Everything will work out. I swear, everything's just going to be fine. And they were like, wait a minute. It was. <laughs> well, let's just do that again. Let's just do that again in the e-commerce wars. And it didn't work out for them as JDG take down the series 2-0. Yeah. Uh, I felt like this game, they still displayed a lot of their uh, strong parts is that Weiwei is developing quite well. Top lane fight, they still got the better of Flawless over that one. So... I, I still think you're going to see Weiwei be in the starting position over of Hacker for the foreseeable future, but they do need to develop a couple more tricks like you were talking about, round out their roster. If you want to play bot side focus, you, it can't just be hyper hyper carry style. It has to be early game as well. You have to show us something there. If not, Suning, they're going to be in a relatively unchanged position than they were uh, compared to Spring. It's the same problem that we saw uh, Dominus, formerly Sino Dragons, having last split, and they're still suffering from this split. They were sort of a one-note team, and they never changed that note, and they are suffering for it now. They were suffering for it during the end of playoffs. So I think from Suning, they need to figure out what other notes. They need to figure out a chord, and I'm not just talking about Sona. They need to figure out other options that they have, because right now, it's just ending up with them getting run over. 
it, it pretty much is. They're going to have a tough schedule ahead of them. Everything easy has been dealt with. So, uh, not sure how, how these guys are going to shape up. You know, hope them, hope them the best. But JD Gaming is the one that I really have higher expectations for. This is the team that has the same exact same roster that they did in spring playoffs. They should be able to reach further. And I hope this is going to be the first spec, uh, first step to their glorious return. And let, speaking of glorious returns, the Emperor of Sharima is back with our MVP. Yagao, give it to him, the 29% damage percent, but really what was more important to me, kill participation. Oh yeah, he was such a menace to the back line there. Uh, Azir, when you have that Sharima shuffle in the last team fight especially, you can see him basically single-handedly dealing with three people going up into SMLZ's face. And this is a champion where not a lot of other players will play it. We've had this situation where Yagao is limited on champion pool, but he does bring his own specialty dishes to the table, takes out SMLZ over the wall with that engage, and is willing to go uh, to stand his ground against uh, against Weiwei and take the kill right here. It always gives JD Gaming that late game comeback potential when he's on this champion. And maybe it's enough that now that Akali is and Jace are seeing nerfs uh, in the mid lane to propel Yagao further, to make him a more well-rounded uh, well mid laner now that other other types of mid laners are suddenly gone. <laughs> I, I still want to be convinced by his rise, at least one game. But You're asking for too much. That's scaling right, right there. Right? Right. If you want scaling here, pick a zero. <laughs> That's all you need for that. <laughs> well, I mean, it worked out for them pretty well because JD Gaming, that was a little bit back and forth still. But once they were able to get the Baron, this time I, th I felt like they had a much stronger grasp on what they were looking to do. Uh, it just worked out so much better. I felt a lot better about that game for JDG than I did for game number one. Because while I was like, okay, is Sooning going to be outscaling and coming back into it? It was never the point where I'm like, okay, JDG's dead, right? It was always, okay, JDG still are in this, still have the chance. It's not just going to come down to a 50-50. They have the scaling, they have the opportunity, they're playing well around it, and they're taking the right opportunities, which I think is the big thing. Because we talk about the bad Baron decisions, and maybe focusing on them, but when they saw Soonin come into the river, they took that. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's what's so important about the LPL. A lot of times the compositions, they don't come down purely to scaling, and they take to come down to where do you want to take the fights and how do you want to take the fights. There's front and back team fights, there's flanks, there's split pushings where you're just trying to draw other people out, there's picks, there's all these different tools on the table and you have to recognize which one you want to use in this specific scenario. So JD Gaming, they still have a very good read on that part. They still are that experienced team that took themselves all the way to the finals. That's what they have over SUNY. SUNY, if you look at them, they're still an incredibly young team. They, they have LDL players and players that have not seen a lot of playtime. Wei Wei, Bio Bio comes down into the list. So you're going to see a lot more weaknesses in terms of shot calling uh, in that part. But JD Gaming have to improve, and they have to improve fast. The window on playoffs is not going to stay there for long. If you look at their current standings, even if they beat everyone else, you know, they're, they're starting from somewhere that was lower than Spring Split. We expect this team to be comparable to what they were when we lost saw them in playoffs around that second place position. But right now, barely playoffs. Barely scratches playoffs. And so but you know still what, a long road. Yeah. That's a good idea. Let us take a look at their standings right now because after that one we've seen a little bit of a shakeup. They finally, finally picked up their first win. They're not gonna be in twelfth place. So at the very least they're moving their way up. Yep, 12th place for them. The big challenges still ahead of them. You look at them, FBX, RNG, LNG, those are our big teams. I would have put EDG there as well, but they did drop the series to, to Invictus Gaming. I think the four, top four teams in this league are very standard and set. But if you look underneath that, you also have a couple people taking out the spots. Top Esports, you have to believe that they're a playoff team. And then IG, they're showing signs of life again. They're coming back. So if I really look down at this Ross, uh, this entire league, honestly, there's only maybe two or three, two spots at the very bottom of playoffs, seven and eighth place for the rest of the teams to kind of scramble over. It's going to be super cutthroat. Billy Billy Gaming, LGD, JD Gaming. I think those are the teams that have to take it. Yep, and we're going to take a look at tomorrow's matches as well because we don't have those teams, but we do have top esports versus Rogue Warriors. Both of these coming in as potential playoff contenders after Rogue Warriors were almost able to bring FPX 
to their knees for their first game loss. No one's still been able to do it yet. Insane that that was the closest series FBX has fought so far. And Rogue Warriors, they displayed that they can team fight extremely well. They have that synergy now that they went through the rough patches in spring where they were a completely new team. So I think this team is going to be a menace to deal with. And I want to see more out of Top Esports. Top Esports so far, two series. Fairly clean, but hasn't shown that much of a growth spurt so far. They play the laning with phase extremely well. After that, when they face tough opposition, that's still a question mark for me. So tomorrow, top esports, how do they team fight? Can they take down Rogue Warriors? That's going to be the question. And I think the first series is interesting too because we have Vici Gaming, who are sort of our still developing squad, going up against Victory 5. And Victory 5 took down Invictus Gaming who took down EDG. Now, I'm not saying the transitive property has to apply in League of Legends. I would never imply that. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I just said it themselves. They can lose to any team, okay? That's right. <laughs> that's right. There's the chance for Victory 5 to show us something really surprising. They've shown a lot of interesting potential. They have very flexible solo laners. They have a lot of new talent coming up. We get to see Mole again as well. There's a lot there for them to work with. They just sort of fall a little bit flat in the execution and tomorrow's yep. a chance for them to work on that. You do see Korn against his old team so that's I think the highlight that you know when someone wants to get revenge when someone knows the opposing team so well then maybe they can use that to their advantage. I really want to see an exciting matchup because both of these guys are essentially assassin players. You had uh, Windy come out with the Windy champion, the Yasuo, and then you also have uh, Korn who's been known for that talent play so that's going to be an explosive matchup for me. However, it's going to be messy. <laughs> That's what oh, I expect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a messy the LPL is, one. <laughs> the fun is always in the mess here in the LPL. But from us, that's going to end the day. And to everyone out there in the United States, Canada, North America, happy Father's Day. Celebrate your father today. Give him a big hug. Just have a little bit of fun with it. And from us, thank you so much for coming out to this production. Thank you to our wonderful production team. Thank you to Clement Chu. We'll see you tomorrow. Who's here?